Hi everybody, sorry it's taken me so long to uh, upload a video. Things have been a little bit hectic around here this October. Um, long story short, a lot of family uh, medical issues um, and also some follow-up for me too. I had to get an MRI and a CT. I'm as okay as I'm going to be. Um, it's alright. So just more stuff related to spine things. Um, yeah, so today, yeah, I have a spine and spines, but I'm fine. Today I'm here to talk to you about um, some horror movies or some of my favorite like spookier movies to watch during this spooky season. And recently I rewatched Child's Play, the original one from 1988. I had not seen it in like forever. <laughs> I haven't seen it in forever. I, I don't feel like they play it very often. In fact, I actually don't feel like they play a lot of movies from um, the 80s very often. So I went ahead and watched that and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, it's, it's, yeah, this, this video is going to cover that. It's going to cover maybe three or four other movies briefly and then share with you like a list of some of my favorite ones to watch every year. So yeah, one of my main goals is actually to share with people older movies that maybe people, I mean, Child's Play isn't that old. I mean, I'm kind of getting old, but it's because it was released in 1988. I was born in 89. But yeah, um, so not that old, <laughs> depending on who you're talking to. Other folks who are younger, they'd be like, damn, that old. But yeah, no, just like, because a lot of people talk about more recent films and I feel like some of the older ones get kind of lost and by the wayside and I don't feel like that's always cool. I feel like sometimes it's important to look back and see where the horror genre has been. In some cases, these are more like horror drama um, or thriller, right? Um, but for the most part, they have horror elements in them. So Child's Play is the first Chucky movie in my family. Um, we watch American football, so we watch the NFL, and it's terrible, but like, one of the, you know, the Raiders coach's nickname was Chucky Gruden, and it actually at one point when I was living in the Bay Area in this like tiny apartment in California, in NorCal, um, um, I was going to my pediatric doctor because I was sick, and my mom and I were standing in the elevator, and he was like, actually there with his son, decked out all in Raiders stuff, and we're all standing there awkwardly in the elevator being like, you know, he leaves and we're like, it's Chucky! But I, yeah, because I guess people used to call him that because when he got really angry, like on the sidelines, he kind of like emulated how angry that doll looks, <laughs> which is horrifying. Um, I really enjoyed it. There's some fun point of view camera angles used in the original Child's Play. I have not seen the remake. I might actually watch it just because I'm curious to see the difference. Um, and yeah, like, I'm, I've always had kind of a natural uh, towards dolls, um, mainly older ones, but I also thought it was funny that, uh, that, that Chucky kind of reminded me, like, the packaging reminded me a little bit of Cabbage Patch, Patch, Patch Kids, those, I don't know if anybody remembers those, I was kind of on the tail end of that being, like, a very late 80s, early 90s baby, so that part was interesting. <laughs> I was like looking at all the different like hairstyles and some of the clothing and I'm like, yeah, when I was a really tiny kid, people still kind of dressed like that. So it was weird. I was like, oh yeah, huh. Um, yeah, Child's Play is fun if you're into like having a doll go after people psychotically. Um, enjoy. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I think for me personally, I watch horror films because especially with all the medical stuff going on in my family, I'm always like, it's terrible, but I also kind of want to see somebody have a worse day than me. <laughs> and additionally, I love mystery, so horror is great at that. It's, it's um, if you're not just gonna watch like drama, depressing mystery case type movies or espionage movies like that, which tend to be more action, but like the, there's some drama ones, then horror movies are like the way to go. So I love mysteries, so automatically, yes. And speaking of, um, kind of like the espionage stuff, I just got watching this movie that my dad wanted us to watch called Fury, or The Fury, and it's from 1978. I was watching it, and being an X-Files fan <laughs> growing up, I was like, wait a minute. We paused it at this one point, and, and we're talking for a minute, and I was like, this redhead 
And this dude, his profile in that particular moment, when we paused it, I was like, look, it's like an evil Mulder and Scully, <laughs> which it kind of was. Um, yeah, and then like the main bad guy has a cigarette constantly, and I was like, the guys, the people who uh, wrote X-Files, did they like this movie? So it was a really neat movie. It's about children who have um, ESP, so like different powers, and the government kidnapping them and experimenting on them and weaponizing them. And it had like this kind of like Taken vibe too, because um, of course Kirk Douglas is in it, who's you know coming and trying to get his son back. And it's like, oh, I'm gonna get my son, and he just the man who won't die, you know, kind of thing in pursuit of his son. And it's pretty interesting, actually. It's it, there's a little bit more to it than that. There's a lot of um, I feel like interesting government commentary. Yeah. So that's The Fury from 1978. Uh, go watch it. <laughs> if that's kind of your thing of conspiracy theory weirdness with ESP experiment stuff. Oh yeah. Good stuff. So speaking of people of ESP, I also just watched Darkness Falls. And I think I've seen parts of it a long time ago. Um, I think maybe it was on TV or something. But I actually sat down and watched the whole movie and it was really interesting. It was like, oh yes, let's do a creepy version of the Tooth Fairy in some town's local lore. And it was great. I loved it. It really did. It's from, it's from, I think, 2003, and it has, like, that really, like, late 90s, early 2000s vibe that I, 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 there's parts of it I miss and parts of it I don't. Um, but, like, I was just like, ah, yeah, this. And, um, it was a really interesting story, too. It was one of those where, you know, like, there's childhood trauma and somebody has to come back and resolve it, and it was pretty fascinating. Um, yeah, psychic encounters. Encounters. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, yeah, that's that's one hell of a tooth fairy. That's all I gotta say. I, I, I really enjoyed that movie. That's probably gonna be added to my list of one I want to watch every year. I loved it. So, um, a movie that's kind of strange, actually, that I watched a few months ago, but came to mind when I was making this list, was, and this should tell you that it left some kind of impact. <laughs> Part of it was because some of the content was kind of debatedly crimson peaky. <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. Um, but it was The Lodgers, um, and it came out in 2017, and it's available on Netflix. By the way, Fury was available through my cable um, thing at the apartment at my parents, and Child's Play was also available, I think, uh, through Amazon, the original one. So anyway, The Lodgers was neat. If you're into, like, gothic horror, um, and that by that I mean, like, very period piece kind of stuff, you'd be hard-pressed not to watch it, if I were yeah. But like, it's, uh, it was pretty, I love the atmosphere in it. It was just really, like the ending, I was kind of like, oh, what? But, but I would, I would not say to not watch it. I don't know. I, I feel like it's, it's, um, it's one of those endings where you're either going to like accept it and love it or you're going to be like, ah, kind of thing. But again, the atmosphere and, and everything in that film was just very spooky and Oh, I love it when it's spooky like that. I love that. So, um, again, that's The Lodgers. Um, a film that came out a while back on Netflix was 1922, which was right as Stephen King one. And I feel like, I don't know, I didn't really hear a lot of people talk about it. I don't know if people just didn't watch it or what the deal is. Um, it was pretty interesting as far as like attempting, I guess if you viewed it from the perspective of attempting to capture a very... I'm guessing Protestant, so white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, like kind of living out in the middle of nowhere as an agricultural person in 1922's kind of mentality. And by that I mean like this very hardcore idea of, of what your relationship um, to the land is, right, in that kind of stereotypical um, Americana <laughs> narrative. So I thought that was very interesting and I really appreciate it. Also again, it's like a period piece film and it's not, I mean, it wouldn't, I know some people be like, well, that's just like, that's just like a thriller with a little bit of mystery and stuff like that, because he's trying to hide some murders, right? Um, but I actually would argue there's there's definitely horror elements to it. It was um, there's some stuff going on that is definitely horror in 1922. Okay, um, so if you're kind of interested in those kind of weird cerebral period piece kind of movies that are kind of um, debatably making commentary about a uh, 
an idea of, of what establishes Americana. Um, you could take it either way, honestly, to be honest, okay? I'll leave it up to interpretation. I felt like it was interesting no matter what. Um, it's good. And it's also about, like, family. <laughs> Your idea of family. It's this big thing in there. It's, uh... Ooh. So the last one I want to talk about, the last movie I want to talk about is the one that I think a lot of people have been speaking about, which is In the Tall Grass, right? On Netflix. And, um... Whew. <laughs> I went in watching that film being like, how are they going to make this horrifying? And of course I saw who wrote it and I was like, yeah, they're going to find something, some way to make this mundane, seemingly mundane topic unnerving as all hell. And they did. And again, I don't want to get into too much, you know, spoiler type stuff or anything related to In the Tall Grass because there's a lot of film you know, a lot of, a lot of films, yes. There's a lot of films. There's a lot of YouTube videos, I'm sure, that are analyzing the heck out of it. But, um, I, <laughs> I had, I'm not going to say I had a, a fun time trying to follow everything. I'm going to say that I had an interesting time and that it was a wild ride. And I'm sorry, but the, you know, I am going to say when people get stuck on a roof, I immediately think of the movie Legion. <laughs> and so for a moment, I was like having flashbacks to that movie being like, Oh my god! You know, um, but it's a very it's a very disturbing um, film in a lot of ways. I mean, I think maybe not necessarily um, in the way some horror films are, um, but in the way psychological horror can be, right? So, oof, oof. In the Tall Grass is worth watching if you haven't seen it already. All these, in my opinion, all these are. I mean, yeah, The Lodger is a kind of, you know, it depends on whether or not you're you're into the ending, but, you know, whatever. It's true for, like, all these anyway. <laughs> Subjectivity is a thing. So, but In the Tall Grass was very complicated. I'm not going to say it was convoluted. It was not. There was some, some rhyme and reason to how all that was going on. And quite frankly, I found the use of the... Um, dogma or some kind of religious uh, <laughs> uh, kind of hook into it. Um, pretty fascinating, um, especially since it's like a roadside thing, and I'm not going to get farther into it than that, and I'm not going to say anything else about the exact geographical location that that takes place in, and perhaps maybe some of the brutal ways that you can interpret that um, with regards to what has happened to people when people settled the United States and the fact that there's just blood everywhere so um, yeah no, again I don't want to I don't want to get too far into that but just know in the tall grass you like psychological thriller or mind-bending stuff watch it okay um, I know I gotta be like one of gazillion people telling people to do that. So um, I wanted to end this video with uh, just saying some of the movies that I happen to like watching. And I know that this is like, again, all things, highly subjective list. Um, but just to share with you, I, I like watching, I don't know if any of you, any of you um, uh, get Turner Classic Movies in the States. Um, it's a channel that they, they tend to uh, air, well they air, their whole purpose is to air classics, classic cinema and they have they have come out with their list if you just like google turner classic movies or tcm um halloween or like schedule there will be ones that pop up and you can see what's going to be on um so that's where some of these really old films came from like the one i'm about to mention the phantom carriage is actually a swedish silent film and i really like it <laughs> it's, it has pretty cool effects for being from 1921 Okay. So that's become a favorite of mine. I also really like The Invisible Man, which is a classic from 1933. Again, black and white, but it's a talkie because, you know, the 30s. So for those of you who don't know, 30s, yeah, talkies. So it's also one of those ones. Like, both of those are really, um, I think probably in some levels more psychological for sure. I know The Invisible Man is, but The Phantom Carriage is pretty trippy. Like, it's both spectral and psychological to an extent because it's exploring really disturbing things about death okay <laughs> um as if its title wasn't a hint um moving on i like the house of wax which is debatably horror like it's 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 an interesting story at least to me <laughs> 
And, um, and then of course, um, my family, we, we like Alfred Hitchcock, uh, film and, um, films in general and psycho psycho. I mean, it's classic. I need, I say more, um, speaking of cerebral and like psychological horror. <laughs> yeah. And then I think, let's see, I put on the list, of course, one of my favorites, the shining. I love the shining, the original, um, kind of, I don't know, the original kind of don't be a shut in kind of film. <laughs> I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, especially if there's like a, a valid psychological need to be a shut in. I'm not going to debate that, but I'm talking about like what happens when a neurotypical person, arguably, maybe, I don't know, the alcoholism is kind of, anyway, um, yeah, I always am kind of like, well, a lot of us who are like that do, do drink a lot of alcohol, but, um, <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, no, Jack Nicholson in that role, I just, I love it so much, and it's, it's gotten, you know, I like, I write a lot, and a lot of my friends are like, yeah, so do us a favor, and like, never, ever look after a Hotel Kelly, never do it, because they're like, horrified that I will lose my complete shit, um, and also because, you know, debatably, I've had a lot of woo-woo ghost story kind of spooky things happen in my life sometimes like it being normal but when people in my family die that I know before I'm told like when you're a kid and you're like why is grandpa here and my mom's like grandpa's not here what are you talking about um and then they you know my mom comes home and there's a message on the answering machine from her sister being like dad's gone end of message <laughs> this is like in the early 90s and my mom just like looking at me like so, so yeah, there's other reasons why I like horror films. Um, hashtag maybe a little relatable sometimes. Uh, so, uh, Halloween 2, 1978, that one, yes. As you can tell, I tend to like older ones. But moving forward, The Others, again, like I said, ghosts. I love ghost-related films. The Others is one of my favorites. Um, it's just great. It's great. Uh, I think a lot of people are like, oh, that movie's so boring because blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm like, do you not care about storytelling techniques? I mean, to each their own. But for me, I love the others. Like, it's an absolute must. Like, I must watch that at least once a year. And it's usually up during uh, this time of spooky season. Um, it's just, uh, you want to talk about a film that has atmosphere? That film has atmosphere. So that's with that's with Nicole Kidman. Silent Hills, you know, from 2006. I saw that with a friend in the movie theater, and I was like, oh, I don't know, man, because I knew it wasn't going to be like the video game at all, right? But I went to go see it. I'm like, no, actually, this kind of works. I really like that film. It, you know, it has pr like a lot of films. It has problems, but it's creepy, and I love it for that reason. <laughs> um, let the Right One In from 2008 is another favorite of mine. Um, again, it's like a Swedish film. There's some English subtitles if you need them. And it has a spooky, not human child in it making friends with another child that is human. And it's just great. So go watch it. Again, that's Let the Right One In, Swedish film. They did make an Americanized version of it. It was okay. I didn't actually, surprisingly, didn't dislike it, but I still like the original better. There's Insidious, there's Babadook, right? Crimson Peak, I've mentioned it before. I mean, I like gothic weird stuff and then ghosts, so that's kind of inevitable that it was going to be on the list. Um, I'm biased, in other words. Lights Out was actually a more recent film that I, I surprisingly liked a lot. I had a lot of mixed feelings about the way um, mental illness was portrayed in that film. Uh, but overall, as far as something that is very spooky, <laughs> I will say yes. It's, it, was, it was pretty unnerving, at least to me. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then of course, just like all the old Vincent Price movies, okay? <laughs> like The Pit and the Pendulum, The Raven, uh, all that kind of stuff. If you haven't watched like Vincent Price movies that have to do with Poe-related titles, what are you doing watching me go watch them? Okay? <laughs> um, and then inevitably also uh, Tim Burton films this time of year, okay? I mean, like, as if looking at me, this, you know, I know a lot of times in my videos I don't always dress like this, but trust me, there was a reason I was like an early 2000s, mid 2000s goth, okay? <laughs> like, even when you have to um, become business goth, <laughs> or, um, 
you know, I don't know, it's complicated. Because I grew up in an ag community, so like part of me is like this kind of like queer looking ag person. And by queer, I mean like, yeah, I'm queer. Um, but, but the other part was like, yeah, man, I'm just black all the time. Yeah, you know, so it's, mm, mm, choices. And then I also like really cute things. So it's like the heart of darkness. Huh. Uh, fighting <laughs> with pastel sugary sweetness and a hint of plaid queer. So that's, I pretty much think I just described my entire style modes. Yeah, those are all my style modes. So yeah, um, Personal aesthetics aside, that's my list of movies. That's what I want to talk to you about today. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you know you like this channel, um, I'm here uh, talking about different types of media and pop culture. Sometimes I have health updates or kind of like just life updates and things that I like to go do or when I travel, stuff like that. So yeah, if you like it, subscribe, ring the bell, and um, thanks for sticking with me. And hopefully, I will be updating a lot more often after this. Again, medical issues and family, including medical issues with myself and my spine, it, it can be very emotionally exhausting, okay? So, um, yeah. Also, in the good news department, I am applying to doctoral programs. So yeah, you can probably guess. My, my LSAT score was okay, but it wasn't good enough that I felt like I could really apply to law school. And part of me was strangely relieved. And I'm like, wait, why the hell am I relieved? And then I was like looking around at these different doctoral programs I had already been looking at. And I'm like, oh, that's what I really want to do. At least now I have taken that and I won't have that haunt me as, as a thing that I didn't do because I've done it. I've taken the test. So yeah, never give up on your dreams, folks if possible. Take care as you're able, okay? Bye.